What we got in the shop today, we got my wife's 68 F100. Um, she asked me to put a roof on this. Um, it's actually, I complain about getting crap work in here all the time and you know, fixing other people's stuff. This is actually a thing that I did about 15 years ago and it got the job done, it wasn't done right. So uh, here we are 15 later, years later, we're gonna go through and try to fix it the right way. Uh, what this F100 had, had a sunroof. Uh, one of the sunroofs you bought at AutoZone or something back in the 80s and someone had it put in here and she wanted it gone and uh, they don't make a roof for this truck. So what uh, we decided to do was butt weld some 18 gauge sheet metal with a MIG uh, right in the center of the roof. I mean, I'll show you on the inside, but it's about that much. And it lasts about 15 years, but you see the truck's been sitting in the weeds and the filler we had on it, it's real rough, real bumpy, and uh, the filler's chipping. It's just rusted out. This roof's shot now. Um, I cleaned it up. The rest of the roof, this truck's pretty solid for the most part. So um, the first step, what I'm gonna do, I got a donor truck for it, and we already cut and stripped down. I'll show you that in the video in a second. Um, I did that first to know where I can cut. I would like to have put the whole roof in, in the channel, and just uh, weld it up um, like a factory would, but I was unable to do that um, because the roof is uh, a little too rusted down the channel. If you see on this roof, it's in really good condition. <clears throat> so starting out, just so I don't cut off too much, I'm gonna probably cut right around this top edge. I was thinking that's one place to weld this uh, new roof onto there. So uh, we'll go ahead and pull this roof off first, get the, the junk part of the roof, the part that you know we know we're not gonna save off, and uh, we'll come up with a plan from there. Um, document it, show you what we got going on. I think this could be a lot harder than actually just putting in a factory roof. So uh, that's the top of it. So here we go. We got the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel on it. Just uh, cutting the roof out. What I'm going to do is cut around the whole perimeter. Not pushing hard. Trying to keep a little bit of heat out of it. I mean, I don't really care about warping the roof itself. But I don't want to damage any of the panels around the area and I'm also trying to watch where the sparks hit you don't want to hit the windows um, that's going to pit up the window in the front I kind of cover it up with a welding blanket and everything else but I'm worried where my sparks go it's a slow process we'll take this roof off in a couple panels um, it's kind of hard to take it off one thing because you never know when you're going to miss something that's why I usually cut around the whole outside just to make sure I'm not missing any plug welds, which the plug welds on this one are pinched on the inside behind the inner structure. Um, you'll see in the next video where we have to drill out those spot welds and pull off that seam. In a second, we'll speed up the video. Here it is, where cutting down the middle. Right there, we got a, a center brace that we we mocked up last time because when they had the, the sunroof there, they, they cut the main brace out of the center of the truck. So that's something else I figured out at this point that I'm gonna have to salvage out of the junkyard truck and uh, install back in this truck because that, that just won't work. Here I am pulling out the spot welds. This is that seam that I was showing you that right where we were using the angle grinder. And you just drill a pilot hole, take that spot weld cutter go right around it and yank up I mean it's a little bit of a process but there's a whole lot the best way to do it This is the donor cam we're going to have, uh, it's a 68, same year as the truck we're going to put it on. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean up the roof, uh, get it all bare metal, make sure there's nothing crazy. It looks pretty solid, but, um, and then what I think we're going to end up doing, we'll cut the pillars and the back pillars, because what I like to do, I mean the cab's junk, this cab's junk, so we're going to flip it over, and we're going to try to take apart the roof skin without hurting it. Um, We'll see how it goes and hopefully this is going to be a good donor truck for what we have. Right here I'm just using Eastwood Strip and Drum. Just getting all the paint off the roof, cleaning it up, making sure there's no big surprises. 
a couple small dents here or there, and uh, I found rust around the corners, which I went over another section of this clip, but this tool works great. This uh, gray drum is my favorite, actually. Recommended highly. All right, so I got this roof stripped down. I always strip them down before we cut the actual truck roof off, and, there's a, and you'll see why in this reason, because the plan has changed up a little bit, being what we have here. It's not as good as I thought. Um, I found some some rust on it. Uh, mostly, I mean, it's 60 years old, so you get what you get. They don't sell a new roof for this truck. Um, and I'll tell you why, if you look over here, I believe with this seam, it's a butt weld on the inside and there's a whole inner structure behind it. I believe the whole back of the truck and the roof is welded first from the factory and they just bring the whole thing together and then pinch weld the seams. Um, so this whole back would have to come off to fix this just do a factory roof on this truck and That's why I'm assuming you can't buy a 68 to 72 roof um, So what we're gonna do um, This whole channel right here if you looks rusted We're gonna try to I looked at the other truck. It's solid there So we're gonna try to butt weld right along here and just not use that part of this roof and use that on the other truck the other factory, we're, I think we're going to try to keep in this channel and try to save all that and factory weld that. Um, there's two ways to do it right here. One's to cut the roof right here and then go into the back window channel and then reuse, you know, just weld this section right here and reuse this whole assembly, which is solid on the truck, and then go in the factory window pinch welds. Um, if it was my truck, that's the way I would go. Um, I like the factory seam. Uh, my wife, whose truck it is, doesn't want the third brake light. And uh, I guess she'd rather have a smooth finish here. So what we're going to do, we're going to separate the roof off uh, the pillars back here and off this panel. Um, once we chop the whole roof off and I get underneath it, we're going to do that. And I'm going to go through and just weld up this whole seam onto her truck and uh, smooth it out so I mean it'll give it a cleaner modern look so I get it um, a lot more welding but it'll turn out okay so we'll weld this all smooth and this will be kept on her truck we don't have to pull the rear window then and uh, same thing over here will be welded up here and the same thing this channel right here I'm assuming is where the water collects you see it goes down and it comes back up so this is where a lot of water is going to sit if it's not doesn't have a good sealer on it and everything so this side's a little rusted too so same thing we'll have to kind of butt weld that um we'll we'll, we'll figure it out um but yeah first thing to do now uh oh yeah one more thing we gotta fix there's a hole right here we're gonna do it right now on this truck um just to make sure the truck's solid holding everything together Right before I weld this, we'll just go over quick settings. Um, there's tons of welding videos out there, so I'll just give you my settings. We won't go over everything about TIG welding, but um, I run 35 amps. I got a button on it. Um, the pedal's just too hard to get in there. 16 uh, CFM of gas. I got a water cool on a CK9 torch with a 16th inch filler rod and a 332nd gas lens on a number six cup. Um, I think that's going to be good enough that we could just fill this in real quick. So I'm going to turn on the water cooler and we'll uh, try to weld this up. Main thing is to keep the heat out of it if we can. And that's it. We'll go ahead and uh, let that come back down. You just quick to the point and uh, we'll grind it up and that should take care of that. Harry M just grinding off the limp of the front of the truck. I had to come from the inside back out. Um, and I'm trying to save without drilling the potholes or damaging the skin of the roof. So that's why I'm sitting there with the grinder doing this way versus the spot weld cutter. Got the truck cab prepped for the new roof. Uh, I welded the bracket in for the roof support in the middle. 
The old one was damaged. I was able to salvage out the donor truck uh, from the sunroof. I also painted, cleaned up the whole inner structure. Usually the factory doesn't point paint there, but we have it off. Might as well take the time where hopefully we don't have to do this again. As you see, that's all done. Um, the weld on that bracket it's not perfect. What I did, we're going to end up butt welding this whole seam right here. I brought it low to hopefully keep the heat from warping it right in the middle of the channel. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to try to fit it on there. I put some insulation, um, sound detonator on top of that bracket. That's from the factory. I had some left over from another project. And you can see the inside of the bracket right there. Welded it there and there. So yeah, let's try to put this roof on and see what happens. And here we are installing the new, well, I guess used roof skin. Um, we had set there tacking in place with the TIG, just doing about an inch, inch and a half every tack, give or take. And we're kind of pushing it in taking two screwdrivers with flat tips and kind of just pulling out, pulling in, get, making sure that butt weld as close as possible. I was lucky on this one that the two roof halves, you see they wanted to peak a little bit and that was easier because I knew that a weld like this could be a soft weld so you could tack it back down. So here I am, I'm actually, the tacks are all done and we're just welding this thing in place, making runs, I mean, I'm getting this, TIG as close as I can to the roof panel and you could see the heat line and the heat affected zone is not wide at all. It's not even make it into the roof. It's not warping the panel. This is real strong area. This was the best way after all trying to figure out what the best way to do it. Now here skipping ahead I'm actually brazing the rear. The channel is a lot bigger. It's a, a thicker gap to fill and I could lay a lot more filler in there and it the braze isn't as strong, but you can see we actually tacked this roof in place anyway. So we're just brazing. This is number 12 cup silicone bronze rod, just filling it in there. It took me a while to get used to this. This is the only second pass I've ever done with TIG brazing. And you're not actually fusing the metal together. You're actually just melting the rod and kind of just filling it in there. And I mean, you go through a lot more rod and everything. The disadvantage of this is real expensive. Um, it is non-corrosive, so I don't have to worry about this area rusting in the future. Um, and it's easy to grind down. You'll see at the end when it's all cleaned up. Um, I think I said it, but I'm using a number 12 gas, um, or number 12 glass cup with a 316 tungsten, using about 25 amps DC welding. Um, I turned my gas down to about 15, 18 on um, my flow. I was at 25 and I think it was just too much at the time. Um, this setting, I kind of, the more I went, the more I perfected it. Um, I think it come out really good for, you know, welding upside down. It's not perfect, but, you know, I can't get at that perfect angle as you can see. I'm trying to, you know, rest my hand on it. And this video sped up to, I think, 12 times or something. So I was probably taking this truck for, you know, by going around the whole roof, about three hours on and off. Um, used a lot of gas, a lot of rod. Um, but I think in, all in all, it was well worth it. I'm happy with how it came out. Um, there wasn't a lot of gap or anything. Well, the roof is tigged in place. I gotta take a body hammer right here. I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit. Right now, this is untouched. Um, I'll clean it up just a little bit, the welds, and then tap it down in place to get that curvature. But I mean, it's close. I did the silicone brass on the corners where the gap was a little bit, little bit bigger from our cutting. But you can see looking down the side of it, I mean, that, that's pretty good for butt welding something. Um, did the whole channel and the gap back here, the silicone brass. Um, right here, there's a huge hole in the roof that we blasted out. Um, and I, I brazed it back in. And then this curve didn't match the roof line so I cut it and you can see now we kind of get them all to match up really well the whole back channel was brazed in I'm gonna grind that down flush and you shouldn't see anything there's a couple spots I have to go back through with the MIG welder it was just hard to work around with the MIG tacks that I had to push it when my wife MIGged it um, just because it, it was it was a tight fit there the roof wanted to stick out a little bit more but 
I guess that's what happens when we take a roof off one truck and put on another truck. So, yeah, we got that whole thing around. Show you a good look at this side. Same thing over here. We got the silicone brass on the, the edges. And then, you know, it's a whole lot easier to weld when you're standing straight up. So this area come out a lot better than looking down the channel. Even though the channel didn't come out too bad. If you look, same thing down here. Yeah, this corner had to be built up a whole bunch. So I got a little more cleaning to do in there, but all in all, pretty good. I'm doing my final prep on the welds, trying to get them all ready. Um, I'm trying to make the metal work where I need as little filler as possible. So I'm just cl cleaning off the high spots with this little grinder. I'm not pushing hard, um, just basically not taking too much off the weld to make sure I don't weaken the weld but make it look clean it's it's a it's a balance act and it takes a little bit of finesse um, take your time again in our sped up video and while I take here with the um, the prep tool I'm sitting there with I think a 36 grit and I'm just, again just smoothing out my lines um, you could see it's still a little bit high that's how when I when I TIG welded it all came out to a point and that's exactly where I really wanted to because this is such a soft weld you'll see I'll take here in the body hammer in a second and just put easy taps down and just push it down um, I'm not banging off of them more hammer on and I'm kind of holding it on pushing down while I'm hitting it. I'm not hitting it hard though I'm just massaging the metal and just moving the molecules around and you could see I'm kind of just working that peak out of it. A lot of feel kind of looking with the angles and I'm just trying to get it where it's flat or just slightly recessed. So I'm done with all the metal work on the 68 Ford. Uh, the roof came out really good. I'm really happy I TIG welded it and I'd rather did install it a different way. In a couple months I'm putting a, a roof on a Barracuda. I got a brand new roof so I'll show you how it's done the right way. We had to do this because it's what we had to work with. Um, the TIG welder was key and just slow and steady. Um, I really like the, the bronze rod that I used for the first time in the brazing. Um, so I think I'm going to use that again on other projects. Um, it worked really good for filling gaps and keeping the heat low here. Um, what I'm going to end up doing with this truck, uh, after I show you the metal work, we'll do it in another video or just, you know, it's, it's the same process we do. I'm going to use some all metal after I DA on 80 grit, all metal, and then basically um, high yield primer, lock it down, get it smooth, flat, and then whatever she does, end up priming it. I don't know. We got, the truck is what it is. Uh, Maybe she'll let me work on the rest of the truck and we'll fix it up. Um, if not, the roof will be done. So that's the first step. So let's take a look and see what we got to finish up the video. Um, I cleaned up the weld. I used the Eastwood uh, uh, red drum on it. You can see it's, it's smooth. We hammered it back down. So there'll be a little bit all metal. I mean, you can't take it down too much further or else, you know, you weaken the weld. But for what it is, for butt welding two pieces, um, it's solid. You look around the back, this corner joint I'm happy with. We had to pull this out. It came was a lot, it didn't match up with the roof on this truck. So kind of contoured that line a little bit. I'll clean it up a little bit more. Um, the silicone bronze rod, I mean, it really filled in pretty good up here. I mean, I had to weld upside down and you could see I got better as the run went on. Just had to get out of the whole, the whole idea of welding and more of a brazing technique. But once you figure it out, it's not too bad to work with. Um, if you look in the truck, the roof line with the bow matches up really good. It's right up against it, the support with all the sound detonator, that'll be real good. And we'll go around the other side. Just the front profile of the truck, just it looks good. It's solid, one continuous weld for the most part. Um, cleaned up, hammered and hammered down. And then, I mean, if you look down here, what we started with, I pulled that out. I mean, night and day difference with that old big welded panel. I mean, that's what it is. And then all the filler that come off of it. Who knows, about 15 years, if we have to do this again, maybe it'll be even better next time. Same thing, so you, the silicone bronze rod, that was a big gap right there. We had the weld in that didn't right um, match up perfectly. But you see the areas that were TIG welded, very little cleanup. It could be a stronger weld. I mean, that's used together well 
And like I said, they'll be a little bit all metal. They'll just cover this gap a little bit. And what that will do, it'll get in any kind of holes and nicks or anything and just really seal that out from water. Same thing with the back of it. And we're going to, when we get done, you should be able to see this as one piece just smooth out. So we stuck it around for the whole project. Thanks. We appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, yeah, until um, next time. Thanks a lot.